We are now to a long-awaited and very excited to have the special education update. Dr. Swift. Very good. Thank you, President Lazarus and trustees. We have a team, and they're all actually going to move up onto the stage at the same time so that we can uh, be um, agile uh, once we're here. Uh, this board meeting, our June 3rd week of June is a study session slash regular meeting of the board. And the topic that we've been preparing to share on for quite a while is uh, this special education update. So um, I will share uh, just a very brief intro. And then I know, Ms. Linden, you'll introduce the team so we can just know who it is we're seeing. And isn't it exciting tonight to be out of a high community level into a medium community level and to have live folks joining us. So welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, very good. You guys sit down and make yourselves comfortable. There you go. Trustees, uh, I appreciate uh, that planning committee, uh, uh, Chair Kelly and members of that committee reviewed this at our meeting this month. In addition, we were able to sit with a few other trustees just to go through all of the work uh, on this special education improvement process. Um, the through line of all of this work has been in about four parts. Um, I remember the planning committee meeting in February of 2020, and the members of that planning committee at that time, uh, Trustee Kelly, Trustee Gaynor, um, specifically remember that we were reviewing our progress on the special education improvement planning process back then, and of course, uh, COVID interfered uh, just a few weeks later. Um, but I want to share with you, even though we aren't, haven't um, maybe talked about it publicly at the board table throughout this time, the improvement work has continued. As you know, trustees, we have wrapped in that initial report of the Hanover report back from uh, 2019 and 2020. We have wrapped that into a redesign of the system, uh, a look at all of our processes, at our communications, at our positions. Throughout this time, this team has had the engagement of our Ann Arbor Public Schools team, and as you could hear uh, from our APAC chair recently, uh, the APAC parent group has been involved throughout this time engaging on this work. Um, our process has been one of reviewing our, our progress. And I do want to note that all of this work has occurred while uh, we've uh, been in COVID. And once our students returned uh, to in-person learning, this work also included reviewing the IEPs um, and the progress of every student and ensuring that those real-time supports are in place. So um, you've been doing the regular work of your job while also doing the systems improvement work. Tonight, we were also bringing some next steps those next steps really around system design, our process, our protocols, our communications. Those are the areas that have been the theme all the way through from 2019 to 2022. So I'm really grateful for all of you to be here tonight to share with the board. Um, we have a lot of work that's, that's gone on and a lot more to do. And trustees, I'm proud to share this evening that we have the right team on this work, and you'll see that as they share. So, Ms. Linden, uh, without further delay, 742, and it's all yours. Thank you so much. It is our great pleasure to be here, President Lazarus, trustees, and Superintendent Swift. This is a topic very near and dear to our hearts, very significant work happening, and a, a really uh, important example of our commitment to our equity work. We understand historically in our district that, that our students receiving special education services um, really deserve our support, our encouragement, our, our really thoughtful work. 
And so tonight we are bringing to you a very brief overview of a deeper dive update. And this report is posted and we encourage everyone to examine it a little more closely. Tonight we'll share an overview and just a few highlights of each of the areas. As Dr. Swift mentioned, this ongoing really significant and deep improvement work has been going on for a few years and it continued during the pandemic, but with some important shifts that were happening during that time. And I just have to commend not only the team behind me, but the school teams all across 32 schools in our district. The hard work of our special education teachers, their general education colleagues and administrators, um, really working to ensure every IEP was fully reviewed and that every instance uh, to progress monitor and to support students was explored, extended, and supported. And that work continues. We know that the impact of the pandemic is not over. We know it will exist for us for the next several years. And I just want to uh, really iterate for this community, our commitment continues and we will not quit. So uh, tonight I am joined by my colleagues, my dear partners in this work, and I'd like to introduce them if they would come forward uh, very quickly. Thank you so much team for being here tonight. Uh, first is my partner, Executive Director, Dr. Marianne Fedition. We have four of our amazing assistant directors joining us tonight, Ms. Sarah Pope, Ms. Mary Weezy, Ms. Audra Hodorf, and Ms. Janine Harper. And each of them will share a little highlight from each of the improvement areas with you tonight. As I shared, we're going to do a quick overview, but we're here for questions and we welcome them tonight. So thank you. To begin, uh, we have set out our shared core values and these are the drivers of our work. Um, the first of which I'll speak to, and Dr. Fedition will share a bit about the others. The first is really important to us, and it represents a shift in, in the siloed way that public schools used to operate when it came to students receiving special education services. And the work in teaching and learning has been to remove those silos to provide really full inclusion uh, as often and as wide as we can. And that began with the really incorporation of all of our special education team members in general ed planning and decision making. And these team members have been a part of the Teaching and Learning Council for several years now. And that lens being at the table as we develop our professional development, our curriculum decisions has been really critical to us and, and really, I think, a powerful move. So this first piece about students being general education, students first, deserving that right to be educated in general education settings to the maximum extent possible, extends to our planning as well. Dr. Fedition, thank you. Thank you, good evening, uh, trustees, Dr. Swift in the community, and thank you again for having us this evening. Um, as Ms. Linden mentioned, you know, we started off our shared values, which is, of course, what is driving all our work um, it's driving our vision. It's driving the work that we do. Uh, one of the things that, as Ms. Linden talked about, is that our students with disabilities are also starting as students in general education first and foremost. Our shared values focus, in essence, on our students, staff, family, and community partners as valued partners in ensuring that all students have opportunities to high expectations, effective instructional practices, and a commitment to all students succeeding. From that, that is where we drive all our work that we're doing in our four, four areas. And I'm actually going to share with both uh, Ms. Mary Weezy and Ms. Audra Holdorf to start with our first priority area, which is access and inclusion. Thank you very much, Dr. Fedition. As a part of this report, we did include a section on the historical work that led to this improvement document that you see here and the work behind it. This is a reminder that this information was shared with the board a while back. We've linked it here for, for your review and for the community to see. Uh, you will see in this area many common threads in the improvement work that we identified in the plan. 
And we want our community to know that all of that deep dive analysis and work that has gone on in the past three years is a part of this plan. Uh, we didn't wait for three years to begin. We have begun uh, initially on many, many things. Tonight we'll share with you work that we've completed and work that is ongoing. Um, and as Dr. Fedition mentioned, we'll share that work in, in four areas for you this evening. So we do invite folks to take a look at that historic piece. Uh, it's included here. And tonight we'll, we'll kind of move forward to section two. And we'll share with you some of that improvement work in our four areas. So the first of that space for us tonight is an area called access and inclusion. This is a place where we want to enhance and build. Following that, we'll talk about the recruitment, retainment, and development of our staff. Uh, next, we will talk about our systems work. Dr. Swift mentioned a significant area of improvement for us lay in communication, and you will see a lot of that ongoing work and the work that we've already completed there. And then in the final section, we'll talk about the redesign of the department. These amazing team members behind me are just one part of that redesign that we're most proud of. And as we wrap up this report this evening, we'll share with you what it will look like, sound like, and feel like when we've arrived at the completion of the work in this plan. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be with you here tonight. I'm Mary Weezy, one of the assistant directors. I have the opportunity to share um, the section on enhancing access and inclusion. And this is um, a really important section for us um, on, in our team, in our staff, and also for our parents. Our parents have, have always come to us saying that we really want to have more opportunities for access and inclusion for our students. Um, so our goal in this area really is to increase opportunities for students to access their gen ed peers and curriculum with appropriate supports and based on their individual student needs. So we want to be able to support those needs while they're having that access with their peers in, in the curriculum. Um, included in the document, there's part of a quote. And I would just like to read the whole thing for you really quickly. It says, inclusive education means every student is valued because of their strengths, gifts, and even challenges. As disability is simply diversity, everyone benefits from meaningful participation and opportunities to learn grade level content with diverse peers. We must trust that all students come to us as incredible whole people who do not need to be fixed. And this really has been the focus for us in our department. Um, some of the completed work that we've done, we really started working with all of our district staff and had the opportunity to do some training on universal design for learning with our gen ed staff, our special ed staff, which um, was an amazing opportunity that we had over COVID. So um, we are very thankful for that and um, continue working on those mindset as well as skill set pieces. Um, we have been looking at ways of supporting our staff in the buildings because with any shift, you know, we need, we know that we need to support our staff who are in the building doing the day to day. Um, one of the main things that we've done is created a coordinator of differentiation and inclusion. And um, this is Ms. Shannon Ferton. And she has done so much to help bridge that gap between general education and special education, and then help train a lot of our building staff on doing the day-to-day -day, um, inclusion work that matters. Um, and part of that was the creation of our building inclusion coaches, um, which are those people that are day-to-day -day in the buildings as resources for the team, um, as well as our amazing district support staff that have helped come in for individual students and really help to support um, teams as they have questions on how it looks and what to do. We've really looked at the full continuum of services for our students, um, have clear curricular guidelines for our self-contained classrooms, because we know we need to have that full continuum, but all students need to be able to have access to our gen ed content, even if they require um, a self-contained pro program at um, one point in their lives. Um, we've also increased our summer supports for students um, with our summer academies and um, allowed students to be able to build some of those skills over the summer. We continue to look at intervention models 
in the district at the secondary and elementary level. Um, literacy instruction, really trying to focus on how to help our students gain those literacy skills that we know are so important for them to be successful post-school. Um, and then ways to differentiate our general curriculum so that all of our students can find success in their classrooms with their peers. Um, and we'll just continue to be looking at um, more trainings for our staff and ways to support um, day to day. Um, I think Ms. Holdorf is going to continue on some of our goals. Good evening. Our next steps uh, within access and inclusion will build upon developing staff, curriculum, and a growth mindset for all stakeholders that support our students in AAPS. Uh, we will work towards equity inclusion within the House of Teaching and Learning by enhancing and building upon the following. A facilitated IEP model to ensure compliance and collaboration between stakeholders, professional development for all district staff and administration, and least restrictive environment and universal design for learning, as well as continuing the work of re-envisioning the district support team, the intensive resource model, and adaptive physical education within the schools pre-K to 12. Good evening, Dr. Swift, uh, President Johnson, trustees and community. It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. The next section is recruit, retrain, and develop staff. So one of the things that was done between AAPS, the WISD, and EMU was to grow your own with some of our paraprofessionals in the district, moving on and getting teaching degrees. I will say there is other ways we do grow your own as well. Um, I'm a product of that. I was a special education teacher in this district first. And so through learning and becoming part of this community, that's another way that that can be done. And I am proud to say that um, I am here for that reason. Another thing that we did during the pandemic in particular opened some doors for us to use our teaching and learning networks to help on silo gen ed and special ed by having special education teachers join in with the general education teachers to do the work in the unit for universal designs for learning to better meet the needs of our students. Uh, additionally, our district support team offered professional development that was optional. So we have our regular professional development. And then in addition, there was optional courses that could be taken to further educate staff if they chose to do so. Moving forward, we want to build more onboarding for our special education staff coming into the district, provide professional development for our leadership within the district, and also continue the grow your own path uh, within AAPS. Hello, once again, my name is Janine Harper. Um, thank you, Dr. Swift and the rest of the board for this opportunity to present today. I'm gonna speak to you today about communication. Part of the report mentions that um, people were receiving conflicting information from SISS. We've designed a goal to address those communication concerns as well as improvement on the current systems that we have in place. This portion is divided up into three sections, the sections for staff, families, and for admin. I will highlight a few things from these three sections for you today. Um, as far as staff goes, we have increased our use of Schoology, which has been beneficial to us, and use of discussion boards with Schoology. This allows us to be able to get out the same information at the same time to the same people so it's not conflicting, as well as using office hours from our coordinators, as well as our ADs and Dr. Fedition. We also have bi-weekly and monthly meetings with Dr. Fedition and, and uh, executive directors, and us ADs meet weekly with our building administrators to make sure that we're communicating effectively and for the right of the kids, for the students, I'm sorry. Um, in effort to increase our communication with our families, as mentioned on here, we partner with APEC, which is the Ann Arbor Repair and Advisory Committee. We meet with them on a monthly basis. Families are able to come and have one-on-one -on -one time with their assistant director as well as to get updated information about what's going on in Ann Arbor for that month. We've made ourselves available to everyone in the district through cell phone and through email. So I would encourage you all to look on our website, our SISS page, it has the most up-to-date contact information for all of us up here as far as email and phone. This work is not done. We're not done working on this. We're gonna continue to work on communication with the families, with the staff and other administrators so that our communication is more preactive and proactive, I'm sorry, instead of being so much reactive lately. 
the redesign really kind of takes everything that we've talked about so far this evening and um, ties it up almost in a bow. Uh, because one of the things that was really important to all of us is to make sure that, uh, the, that we provide the most ultimate and positive outcome for students, first and foremost. But in order to do that, we also know that um, we can't be in the, every single classroom, so we have to find a way as a department to be able to increase the support for the leaders of our building and also the staff of the, our building. Um, plus, as we look uh, forward to our vision of inclusion, again, it's unfortunate, but we can't be in every single IEP meeting or in every single building. So we have to find a way and means to systemically support our building leaders and to support our staff to be able to move that vision uh, uh, forward. Um, as we've talked about a bit throughout this is we've, we've realigned and reallocated some of our staff into um, some critical key roles. Um, as we've talked about uh, m many times this evening, our coordinator for differentiation instruction. And that individual, uh, I can't even say singular purpose because she's so multidimensional, multifaceted, um, is helping with that special ed being the room in the house of teaching and learning, closing those silos between general education and special education, but also being able there to support staff, both students or staff uh, that teach students with IEPs and our general education staff of helping them find the ways and means and training and coaching to be able to help them differentiate their instruction so students can, uh, so we do reduce those barriers for students to access that general education curriculum, their general education peers. The other thing that we included in that is our district teacher consultants. We have a district teacher consultant for cognitive impairment classrooms, ASD classrooms, and our resource classrooms. The singular focus of those individuals is to work directly with classroom teachers in coaching and supporting and providing in-classroom um, support to them to help them support their students. Uh, additionally, our, our last component of redesign is our coordinators for compliance and support on secondary and then also uh, elementary. And again, uh, the focus is number one, compliance. The wonderful thing about special education, and there's this always overarching um, uh, concern about compliance, but also we see it's compliance and support. So it's going in and directly helping IEP teams, it's helping IEP uh, staff individually, and also building leaders to build upon those IEPs, to build upon evaluations, to make sure that not only are they robust for the students, but also robust um, um, for our staff to understand and our parents. How do we best communicate to our parents? Because remember, an IEP is a legally a binding contract, and we want to make sure that all the individuals involved not only have a stake in that contract, but there's an understanding and a clear passageway for where we begin and where we go. So um, that's how we tie up everything, and the redesign of our, of our department has allowed us to address some of those uh, communication concerns because we've eliminated that communication lapse between a staff member and assistant director. We've actually built in a hierarchy in there. So if they can't reach their assistant director, these four um, amazing individuals oversee 32, 33 buildings. Um, there is a means for them to get support that are outside of their assistant directors. Thank you, Dr. Fedition, for that. Um, and I appreciate everything you do for our you. students, and you are building a wonderful team. Thank you for coming to our meeting, and thank you, Ms. Linden, for sharing also. Um, you are definitely a big part of this success. So thank you, and we look forward to other updates down the road. Good night. Thank you so much.